OpenAI is absolutely dominating the headlines. They have just announced a 10 gigawatt partnership with Broadcom. This is getting insane. Check this out. So today we're announcing a partnership between Broadcom and OpenAI. We've been working together for about the last 18 months designing a new custom chip. Uh, more recently, we've also started working on a whole custom system. These things have gotten so complex, you need the whole thing. And we will be starting in late next year deploying 10 gigawatts of these racks, of these systems, and our chip, which is a gigantic amount of computing infrastructure to serve the needs of the world to use advanced intelligence. So this is going to entail both compute and chip design and scaling out? This is, uh, this is a full system. So we worked, we closely collaborated for a while on designing a chip that is specific for our workloads when it became clear to us just how much capacity, inference capacity the world was going to need. We began to think about, could we do a chip that was meant uh, just for that kind of a, a very specific workload? Broadcom is the best partner in the world for that, obviously. And then to our great surprise, this was not the way we started, um, and, but as we realized that we were going to really need the whole system together to support this as these, as this got more and more complex, it turns out Broadcom is also incredible at helping design systems. Um, so we are working together on that entire package, and this will be uh, this will help us even further incre uh, increase the amount of capacity we can offer for our, our services. So, Hawk, how did this come about? You know, when did this start? When did you guys first talk about working together on this? Well, other than the fact that Sam and Greg are great people to work with, it's a natural fit because OpenAI has been doing continues to do the most advanced models, frontier models in generative AI out there. And, but as part of it, you, need, you, need, you continue to need compute capacity, the best, latest compute capacity as you progress in the roadmap towards a better and better frontier model and towards super intelligence. And compute is key part, and that comes with on semiconductors, and as Sam indicated, more than semiconductors. And we are, even though I say it myself, probably the best semiconductor company out there. And more than that is AI is a very, very exciting opportunity for us in terms of we, we are, my engineers are pushing the innovation envelope and newer and newer generations of, tech, of uh, semiconductor technology. So for us, Com, uh, com collaborating with the best generative AI company out there is a natural fit. And this isn't just chips, it's going out to scale, like 10 gigawatts. And I can't have trouble kind of even understanding that. What does that even mean when you're talking about 10 gigawatts? First of all, you said it's not just chips that Hawk touched on this too, but the vertical integration point is, is really important. We are able to think from like etching the transistors all the way up to the token that comes out when you ask ChatGPT a question and design the whole system. All of the stuff about the chip, the, the way we design these racks, the networking between them, how the algorithms that we're using fit the inference chip itself, a lot of other stuff all the way to the end product. And one of the many reasons I'm so excited about that is by being able to optimize across that entire stack, we can get huge efficiency gains. Um, and that will lead to much better performance, faster models, cheaper models, all of that. As you get that better performance and cheaper and smarter models, one thing that we have consistently seen is people just want to use way more. So we used to think like, oh, we'll optimize things by 10x and we'll solve all of our problems, but you know, optimize by 10x and there's 20x more demand. Uh, so 10 gigawatts, 10 incremental gigawatts, this is all on top of what we're already doing with other partners and you know, all the other data centers and, and silicon partnerships we've done. Um, 10 gigawatts is a gigantic amount of capacity. And yet, if we do as good of a job as we hope, um, even though it's vastly more than the world has today, we expect that very high quality intelligence delivered very fast and at a very low price, the world will absorb it super fast and just find incredible new things to use it for. So what is the hope with this? The hope is that the kinds of things people are doing now with this computer Compute, um, you know, writing code, doing more and automating more and more of enterprises, generating videos and Sora, whatever it is, they will be able to do that uh, much more of it and with much smarter models. It's amazing. Uh, so Greg and Charlie, when you think about historically when people have tried to develop 
you know, chips or hardware to suit whatever was the current modem for using computing at that point. What examples have you looked upon historically to figure out how to plan forward? What's been inspiring you when you think about this? Well, I say the number one thing, honestly, is working with good partners. Um, I think it's like very clear that we, as a company, are not able to do everything ourselves and getting into actually building our own chips for our own specific workloads was not something we could do from a total standstill without working with Hawk and Charlie and Broadcom. Uh, so it's just been really incredible to lean on their expertise um, together with our understanding of the workload. And it's been actually very interesting to see the places where OpenAI is able to do things very differently from the rest of the industry or the way that things would historically be done. Uh, for example, we've been able to apply our own models to designing this chip, uh, which has been really cool. We've been able to pull in the schedule, we've been able to get massive area reductions, right? You take components that humans had already optimized and uh, just pour compute into it, and the model comes up with its own optimizations. And it's very interesting. We're at the point now where I don't think any of the optimizations we have are ones that human designers couldn't have come up with. Like usually our experts take a look at it later and say, yeah, like this was on my list, but it was like, 20 things that would have taken them another month to get to. Um, and that's actually really, really interesting that we were coming up on, on a deadline working with Charlie's team and we were running optimizations. We had a choice of, do we actually take a look at what those optimizations were or do we just keep going until the deadline and then take a look after? And we decided, of course, you gotta just keep going. And so we've really been building up this expertise in-house to understand this domain. And that's something we actually think can help lift up the whole industry. But I think that we are heading to a world where uh, AI intelligence is able to help humanity make new breakthroughs that just would not be possible otherwise. And we're going to need just as much compute as possible to power that. Hans, you told me that you weren't surprised by this announcement. Please can you tell the audience exactly why OpenAI has decided to partner with Broadcom? What makes Broadcom a good partner for OpenAI? And what is it OpenAI is gonna be doing with Broadcom? I mean, they've just had an announcement with AMD. They've had a huge partnership with NVIDIA who also recently invested $100 billion into OpenAI. Why is OpenAI also now partnering with Broadcom? What is the opportunity Sam Altman sees here? Well, to answer the question of what makes Broadcom such a great partner for OpenAI at this stage in the game, we do have to go back in time a little ways. You know, after AlexNet proved that GPUs and deep neural networks were an incredibly powerful technology, there were really two main big players that went all in on trying to develop hardware and software around this ecosystem. And the first of which you obviously know, and that's NVIDIA. Jensen Huang very quickly latched on to the importance of this moment moment and started building NVIDIA towards becoming this AI first play that has since come to dominate the market. But there was also another company that went all in on accelerated parallel computing and deep neural networks around the same time, which I think most retail investors just don't fully appreciate. And that company was Google. So last month, Google processed over 1.3 quadrillion tokens, which is more than four times as many tokens as OpenAI processed. And this is really the culmination of deep work in the area of artificial intelligence that goes back many years. And after placing some very large early orders for GPUs from NVIDIA in the early 2010s, Google went all in on developing its own in-house silicon to actually do the same types of jobs, which you've most likely heard of, and that is the Google TPU. And what you may or may not realize is the Google TPU is actually co-developed with Broadcom for every single generation of the Google TPU up until this most recent Ironwood release. So Broadcom has played a critical role in Google actually being able to develop the backbone of this capability in-house to be able to compete with companies like NVIDIA head to head in a way that is completely independent of Jensen Huang, the NVIDIA chip stack, the CUDA ecosystem, or the NVLink networking technology. And like I said, I think that Google's ability to develop this entire vertically integrated stack of hardware and software to compete with NVIDIA head to head is just completely underappreciated within the market. But Broadcom's participation in custom AI silicon isn't limited to just Google. They're also working with Meta on their in-house AI silicon architecture called MTIA. And they're also working with Amazon on the Trainium and Inferentium hardware stack as well. So Broadcom has a depth of experience working directly with these large customers that goes back well over a decade across multiple hyperscale customers so Broadcom has a depth of experience that stretches back over a decade now, and then a width of experience that spans across multiple hyperscale customers, 
that really makes them a great partner for helping OpenAI to actually work backwards from these new workloads that OpenAI is seeing all the way down to the level of the transistors on a chip that allows OpenAI to start with some of these new and underserved inference workloads and then go all the way back to design the perfect silicon that matches that, to design the perfect silicon that enables that specific workload, which might be tough to accommodate either with NVIDIA's architecture or even with AMD's. And I think one of the big things that this deal shows is that Sam and OpenAI and Greg Brockman really have their sights set on becoming the next hyperscale company. They really wanna be deploying as much or more compute than Google, Microsoft, Meta, or even Amazon. And if they're serious about that goal, they're gonna to need to rely on lots of different partners via lots of different deal structures. You know, they're gonna need as much compute as they can get from Nvidia. They're gonna need as much compute as they can get from AMD. And then like these other hyperscalers, they're also going to need to build their own silicon from the ground up to handle specific workloads that actually fall in between the cracks of what Nvidia is really good at or what AMD is really good at. And so that's the opportunity I think that Sam sees with Broadcom is to actually mature OpenAI over the next five years. And so that's the opportunity that I think Sam Altman sees ahead for OpenAI is really the ability to execute infrastructure build out right alongside all of these other big boys in the hyperscale game and potentially even better than anyone besides Google. And since OpenAI's frontier AI research efforts are so far ahead of all of those other hyperscalers except for Google, I think that really puts Sam Altman in a good position to actually be able to see these new AI workloads coming further down the road than Meta, Amazon, or even Microsoft, which at least gives them an opportunity to surpass those hyperscale clouds and help Sam to hopefully catch up as close as possible to Google. The second thing I wanna ask you, Hans, is actually a bit of a pulse check on the AI ecosystem. Like I mentioned, we recently saw Nvidia make a $100 billion investment into OpenAI. We then saw OpenAI agree a six gigawatt deal with AMD last week. Now a 10 gigawatt deal with Broadcom this week. You sent me a link to a tweet today saying Google is processing 1.3 quadrillion tokens per month at the moment, which just so happens to be four times OpenAI's current run rate. We're also seeing ChatGPT's adoption rate growing faster than the internet did. We're seeing OpenAI's revenue grow faster than Meta and Google did. And we're also seeing compute demand scaling at over 4X a year, three times faster than Moore's Law. It seems like an absolutely insane time to be observing technology. What do you make of all of this, Hans? Well, yes, it's been an absolutely wild couple of weeks, and it's crazy to see what Sam and OpenAI have been up to and just the scale of their ambitions. Ultimately, Sam is just trying to do everything he can to keep up with Google at the frontier of AI. And a big part of what that means is that he has to bootstrap a giant cash printer around his company super fast if he wants to be anywhere close to keeping up. And as you mentioned earlier, Google's currently processing 1.3 quadrillion tokens per month, which is over four times as many tokens as OpenAI is processing. So you can see how far ahead Google actually is in terms of putting AI to use within their core products. And they can do all of that today while generating tons of free cash flow that they're then able to turn back into infrastructure investments that self-fund. And so they're not having to go out to the capital markets or the debt markets in order to raise funding for their infrastructure buildouts. But the rest of this ecosystem isn't blind. They also see where Google's at in this threat of potential dominance by Google in AI is actually something that Sam can use to motivate each and every one of these partners to contribute to the future success of OpenAI as a potential hedge against Google's AI hegemony which is actually allowing Sam to assemble this large pool of resources and partners from near and far that he can scare, bribe, manipulate, or inspire into joining him. So at this point, there's really only two possible outcomes. Either Sam and OpenAI become the next hyperscale AI company, or they will explode trying and leave a massive amount of carnage in their wake. But I wouldn't necessarily bet against Sam and OpenAI here. They do have the benefit of a core product in intelligence that is as valuable today as oil was during the industrial revolution. And there is quasi unlimited demand for this intelligence, especially since we continue to find ways to make it smarter, more reliable and cheaper. And so what Sam and the OpenAI team are finding is the same thing that some of the other teams in AI are finding as well. That as long as you can make it smarter at the same price, or if you can make it cheaper at the same level of intelligence, or even more, 
if you can make it smarter and cheaper at the same time, then your demand actually explodes exponentially. And so they're actually very confident based on the research that they're seeing in-house that they're going to be able to deliver those smarter and cheaper models, which will then drive this demand growth, which will consume all of this compute and infrastructure build out that they're aggressively planning for. And then when they combine the demand growth that they forecast with their ability to monetize that demand, we could very easily see one of the fastest growing revenue companies in history being born as we speak.